Hi, this is Brother Richard. This is Brother Richard. And today we're continuing our lesson series, Prototoker's Mystery. This will be part 318. And the title for today's lesson is Classroom in the Heavens. <clears throat> Everything focuses around the gathering and its purpose. Scripture teaches the gathering will connect all that is in Christ together, whether it's in the heavens or in the earth or in the subterranean regions. Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 9 to 10. Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 9 to 10. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. So what we find here, the gathering is a huge part of the Father's master plan. It is almost all-encompassing in its importance to the development of what the Father has purposed. That's why Paul here is putting an emphasis on it. Verse 11, uh, verse 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven, which are on earth, even in him. So at the gathering, at the end of the gathering, all existences are going to be divided into two categories. Those that are in Christ and those that are outside of Christ. You will have in the creations two basic realities. The creation which is in Christ, which is all connected, whether it's in heaven, earth, subterranean regions, and that which is outside of Christ. Heavens, earth, subterranean regions. There's going to be a division of reality. And uh, the reality is going to be divided into that reality, those realities that are in Christ, those realities that are outside of Christ. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> what I have written in here is the end of the age. So you have spoke that out to me or us mm -hmm. at some point. Yes. Can you further elucidate on that? Well, it's the conditions that constitute the end of the age. It's the gathering. Beginning of sorrows, the beginning of the onset of the reality separation. The end of it culminates at the end of the age. The uh, end of the tribulation period, onset of the millennium. She yes. understand that since at this point the Protodocus angels are in the heavens, they are teaching, I'm talking about from the point of their elevation when they receive their rewards. Since they're teaching, clearly they're able to communicate with one the Holy Spirit, any being in Christ, irrespective of where that being may be from a geographical sense. We understand that to be every matrix dimension, the earth itself and of course the heavens. Are they also able to communicate, if they wish, with those who are not in Christ in those same locations? They could, but they won't. Because? Because it's separation. Okay. Father wouldn't allow it. Okay. So they wouldn't even think about doing it, is what you mean, right? Now, the whole aspect of what <clears throat> Paul is saying here is now you have the culmination of all things, mm -hmm. climax of all things. Where we are now is proceeding to this point it's going to be on one side or the other. Those that are not in Christ, when this thing goes down, are going to find themselves separated. So the heavens and all those who are in them and all of the other places who are in Christ, they're receiving the instruction from the Protocol's angels. But that does not 
equal the liberation. It begins the beginning of the liberation. So that's the beginning point of the so, right. So then, does does the heaven, do the heavens understand that that's the beginning of the? Liberation? Oh yes, and they rejoice. We did, said that in the last lesson. Uh, but what we find is this is all leading to the rapture, which is, of course, the adoption, which is the climax of the Father's master plan for the Prototokos. The Father has an, an, an embarked upon a phased <coughs> progression of his master plan. <coughs> the first phase is the beginning of sorrows, which is a judgment. The second phase is the gathering. Third phase is the rapture. Fourth phase is the ultimate second coming, setting up the kingdom. I imagine that the same heavens we're talking about will be rejoicing all the way through from the end of the gathering through to the rapture. In other words, it's that period of time that is the liberation from their perspective. Yes. Mm. Yes. You have a question? Okay. Let's go on. Principle. Scripture indicates all the righteous that have been gathered, connected. Uh, that's why I try to get your attention. Scripture indicates all the righteous that have been gathered and are connected will witness the Father's master plan coming to completion and will glorify him. Revelation, fifth chapter, 11 to 13. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders. And the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing, and honor, and glory, and power unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. So all that's connected in Christ, heavens, earth, subterranean regions, hidden sea, they're all connected observing the things that are happening around the throne. Yes? So since we know that those that were comforted, those who drink water were comforted in the near parts of the earth, Ezekiel? 31. 31, okay. <clears throat> they are higher intelligent beings than humans, obviously. And they never signed with, with uh, Lucifer, which is why the Lord moved them to the paradise regions. At the point that we're talking about when Everyone's being instructed, the entire creation is being instructed. Excuse me, I should say, at the second coming is what I really mean. Yes, that's the point of where the peoples of the saints receive their reward, isn't it? Are the superior intelligence that I've just described in the paradise readings on the same level or higher than the peoples of the saints? Lower. Because? Because the people of the saints I'll come under the new covenant. Okay. Those in the subterranean never came under. Okay. At the they most, they'd be under the old covenant. Okay. But since you're mentioning them, that's our next pro uh, uh, well, okay. principle. Are they, are they in the heavens or new earth? Uh, earth. Okay. Earth. Now, what we see, that was the next principle.
What we want to take a look at here deals with this. When it says every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, turn to Ezekiel 31, 16. We see the conditions and circumstances around which they're confined to the subterranean regions. Ezekiel 31, 16. I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall when I cast him, Lucifer, down to hell with them, his inner circle, to descend into the pit. And all the trees of Eden, the choice and the best of Lebanon, all that drink water, shall be comforted in the neither parts of the earth. Now, what we find here, two things. The choice and the best refer to the righteous that did not side with Lucifer. Note what it goes on to say about them. Number one, they're in paradise regions, water regions. They can drink water. They have access to the paradise regions which are reserved for them. Do you know what it says? Shall be comforted. So you have a past. I cast them down. And then you have a future shall be comforted. The comforted does not refer to the conditions of paradise. That that's goes without saying. The comforted refers to Revelation, the fifth chapter, what we just read. They're comforted because they glorify God who has taken advantage of the situation and is now embarking upon a restoration of the creation. So to connect the rejoicing of the heavens with the comforted of these in the paradise regions. In other yes. words, they're both rejoicing. Yes. Yes. It's as though they they now understand that they're being vindicated. Right. Look, they got cast down. They didn't do anything wrong. But the judgment came. Now, God doesn't afflict his own during a time of judgment. He protects them. They're, they're cast down to paradise region, but they didn't do anything to de deserve even being cast down. And the Luciferians that engineered everything have the run of everything. They cause the fall of man, they corrupt the creation, they're allowed to go willy-nilly. The righteous are penned in these regions, not allowed to go back where they came from, not allowed to resume their authority. So what you find here, all this time passes, and now God is being faithful to his word. The enemy is going to experience judgment. The righteous are going to be vindicated. All the righteous. There's a separation now. They are rejoicing because there's a connection. They're also being comforted because they could see God finally taking the path, initiating the path for the liberation of the creation. Will they be recompensed? in a similar way as the saints do, who lost things as a result of saints. Sure, okay. sure. And I think you previously said, if I remember you previously saying that, the Father didn't want them to stay in those regions because obviously they, they, those regions become corrupt. He wants them to be righteous, then they can't be in a corrupt uh, area. Do they understand that? Yes. So that there's no... Um, consideration, you know, what, as you said, 
they didn't do anything wrong. What did we do wrong? Why, you know, why it was there? They know just the same way that the heavens know. They understand, yes. But the creation <coughs> really doesn't. The creation sees these righteous rulers being imprisoned in the heart of the earth. So do they require the instruction of the sons to give them that understanding? Well, they seek to forsake a place because now the father's master plan is progressing to the point where they are being vindicated. Mm. They didn't do anything wrong. Now the creation begins to understand they didn't do anything wrong and they're being given the favor of the Father in this situation. The creation is rejoicing. We, re we did that in the previous lesson. The heavens are going to rejoice because of God's faithfulness in the very heavens. They see the restoration beginning to take place. Everybody begins to understand where, where the Father's going at this point. However, they were taken from the heavens uh, down into what? Down paradise into paradise region. regions, mm -hmm. and then to the new earth. So they won't have heavenly abundance of that anymore. Well, they're going to have positions, though, that exceed what they had before. Father always does that. Positions on the new earth that exceed their heaven. Okay. The new earth. The new earth also has heavens. All all planets, yes. planetary existence. The new, it's the new heaven and the new earth. Okay. So they're going to have positions in the new heavens. Right. But which compi comprise that system, but not beyond the new heavens, okay. where the prototokis and its, <clears throat> the, the, the glorified saints are going to be. But those new heavens are what, would, what could be defined as a secondary, until such time as It's an eternal out. secondary creation. Okay. New heavens, new earth, eternal secondary okay. creation. It will never pass away, but it will be uh, consistently filled with righteousness. They're going to have an integral part with that. Now, <clears throat> Scripture teaches they, who is the they, all those that are connected in Christ, will witness the progression of events leading to the glorious return to earth of the Lord as revealed in the book, the seven sealed book. Everybody is going to be looking at that book, no matter where you are. Subterranean regions, earth or heavens, you're going to be connected in Christ. You're going to be given the progression of where the Father's going at this point. Prototokos is going to be in the vanguard giving them revelation knowledge of what's taking place. We're going to look at some examples. Revelation, the fifth chapter, verse 2 to 3. <clears throat> and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. So what do we see here? Everybody sees the seven seal scroll. <clears throat> Everybody observes the events that are taking place at the throne, whether they're in the heavens or on the earth or in the subterranean regions. Everybody observes the same thing. The angel makes a proclamation who is able to open the book and to pursue its contents <clears throat> and what we find it says no man in heaven nor on earth neither under the earth was able now the word here <clears throat> that's translated able comes from a Greek term dunamai which means 
was able to have power to open the book. So nobody in the gathering is able to have the power to open the book. And then we proceed. <clears throat> Verse 4, I wept much because no man was found worthy to open the book and to read the book thereon, neither to look thereon. One of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So we find, of course, the Lord Jesus qualifies to have the power to open the book, strip off the seals, and reveal the contents. This takes place. <clears throat> under the view of everybody in the heavens and in the earth and underneath the earth. They all see the contents of this book once the Lord begins to strip away the seals. Why? Because everything now is eternally connected in Christ. Everybody is going to experience the same uh, um, event. No matter where they are, if you're in Christ, you're going to experience this. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture indicates all will see the exalted positions that the Father will give to the faithful prototokin sons. <clears throat> Matthew 16, 18. They're going to see the prototokis being given the leadership <clears throat> role in progression now that leading to the second coming. Everything is going to be viewed by all the creation in Christ <clears throat> from the perspective of the prototokis leadership. Matthew 16, 18. Jesus said, I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What he's saying, when the Prototokos church is fashioned, when the Prototokos church is activated, which takes place at this point. They're going to see the, the prototokos, the salt, the Luciferians, every single place that they exist and overcome them. The Father is showcasing the prototokos sons, showing the rest of the creation that they are indeed come into their inheritance and authority over all things. We're going to see some examples of this. Turn to Daniel, 7th chapter, verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. That's emphasizing the eternality of them possessing the kingdom. All that are in Christ are going to see the saints, once they're set in motion, possess the kingdom. Take it out. Take it away from the Luciferian dominion conquer it and possess it for the Father. Scripture indicates they 
will witness the control that the prototokens have over all events on the earth. Revelation 6, verse 6. The book is open, they begin to see the events taking place. They begin to see the prototokes crafting these events and controlling these events. Notice what it says in verse 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Who is he talking to? Verse 5. When he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld in a black horse, and he, he that sat on him, had a pair of balances in his hand. So it's the prototokens that set this thing in motion. It's the prototokens that give direction, get limitation, parameters of what this one on the white horse, on the black horse, can and cannot do. All the creation in Christ see this. All acknowledge who's in charge here. The Father is given prototokis, sons, carte blanche, to initiate the return of the creation out of the hands of the Luciferians. Amen. Revelation 18. Revelation 18. Now an angel is sent down from heaven to make a proclamation. It's the prototokos that send him down. Verse 1, after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, the earth was lighted with his glory. So this is somebody on the order of maybe a dawn star. He's a messenger though. He's making a proclamation. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and has become the habitation of devils and the hole of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard Another voice from heaven, this is the prototokos, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. So this is a voice that dispatches the angel to make the proclamation, and he's dealing with his people that are in the Babylonian system that need to come out before it goes down to destruction. Now, Scripture teaches <clears throat> the Father will receive glory and praise from the whole gathered creation when they see the greatness of the Prototokos sons. Turn back to Ephesians, the fourth, the first chapter. We're going to read verses four to six. (coughs) 
Paul talking about the father's intents as it applies to the prototokos. According as he hath chosen us in him, Christ, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. The word children there basically means sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So he's talking about the father's predetermination to bring forth sons patterned after his son and to glorify them so that they will dominate all things. Notice what he goes on to say in verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. What does that mean? That means that he is going to get glory and praise for the work that he is embarking upon. When the creation sees the brilliance of the suns, they're going to immediately glorify and totally uh, uh, give praise and honor to the Father for the majestic work that the Father has done in bringing forth this, this group of brethren. <clears throat> Drop down to verse 12. that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. What does this mean? That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. It's talking about the majesty, the end is going to give the Father praise and glory. The beginning starts with those who put their trust in Christ born again. What is he going to what is he saying here? <clears throat> Verse 13, in whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. <clears throat> He's talking about the master plan of the Father. It starts off with the new birth. It continues on with the progression of being an overcomer. It ends with the adoption. What is he saying? He's saying that the Father is going to showcase those that remain committed from the new birth to the adoption. They are going to be his prize possessions. He is going to showcase them before the whole creation. Amen. Turn to Ephesians second chapter. Verse 7. Ephesians the second chapter verse 7. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. The Father is going to pour out his love abundantly upon the sons of God that have persevered. They are going to be preeminent above all things. They are going to be the first to be shown all things they are going to be given authority to rule and reign over all things in Christ for eternity. Turn to Hebrews, second chapter. We close it with this. Hebrews, 
Hebrews, the second chapter, verse 7 and 8. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels, thou crownedest him with glory and honor, and has set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For that he put all he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Why? Because he's qualifying for the position of the adoption. <clears throat> When he receives the adoption, all things. When the Father says all things, when you take a look at who the Father is, the Father's infinite. The Father has no beginning, no ending. He has no defined parameters whatsoever. If he says all, that means everything that currently exists and ever will exist is going to be put under the foot of that son who is qualified to become his son. I said I was going to stop here, but I'm going to give you one more scripture. Revelation 21, verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. This is the Father himself speaking. We see it at least two times. The scripture is telling us those that qualify, those that endure, those that are willing to sacrifice, willing to yield to what the Father wants to do in them and through them are going to be the recipients of all things in Christ. Amen. That is a win-win situation in which you can't, this world has nothing to offer. There's no comparison. Praise the Lord. Can you shut this off? <laughs> I, I won't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's any questions, we're open. Any comments, criticisms? What do you think? Just a lot of meat. Not chewing. Uh, the idea is you can identify with what's being said here. And uh, this thing is real. This is not something fabricated. He's out of the mouth of the Father himself. We are given this golden opportunity. So it's for each one of us to decide what we want to do with it. <clears throat> I say this every week. The time is open. The opportunity is here. Those things the Father has made ready and in that respect, sky's the limit. So take advantage of it if you feel the calling.